my name is Brett Danton. Uh, I'm a commercial director and DP. I've shot with all the cameras used in the Royal Light. In fact, I shot with the very first one, which was the uh, C200, which I'm using to record this on. And then I'm lucky to have the other two flavours in the range that use the Cinema Raw Light. I've got uh, the uh, C300 Mark III and the C500. Um, both of them using internal Cinema Raw Light. Uh, obviously the C500 is full frame, so records a 5.9K image, giving you a little bit of flexibility in post. And then the C200 and the C300 record a DCI file which gives you a little bit of uh, extra on the sides if you want to use uh, inside a 16.9 crop. If I can I'm always going to use raw. I mean I view it like a digital negative is what I'll call it. Uh, I mean you want to extract as much information out of that Im image as you can. You're Then you can turn around and manipulate and do what you want in a post site so it gives you much more flexibility. You're not baking in a look uh, you know, when you take it into the NLE, you decide if you want to be in log two, log three, they all have different ways, but you have full control over what you can do with that, with that image at a later date. And especially with the way things are changing, all the NLEs support Cinema Raw Light. You can also work inside a proxy workflow as well. Uh, all of these cameras produce proxy. I use an XFA VC proxy. It's nice now as you've got the same flavor of raw in the three cameras, you know, the three Canon uh, Cinema Raw Light cameras. So, you know, you've got consistency as well. So, you know, you know that you can match those files together. The other thing that I see is the colour renditions. The colours seem to have a, I don't know, they have more of a depth and more of a richness to them. You know, when, when we're doing our final post work, you know, everything's, it, it, it's really punching off the screen. When I did the Jaguar commercial in New Zealand, we had all sorts of weather issues. The mountains were all supposed to be showing in the background. And, uh, we, you know, we arrived there and it's pouring with rain, it's mist, and I can't see any of the, the background. So we still had to shoot the car. We had no choice. So what I did was we marked where the camera was and we went back a few days later and reshot some background plates. The post house took the two files. Actually, I think they ended up with three and joined them together. So working inside that raw workflow they were able to layer the shots you want the ultimate image quality that's that's what i would shoot From a post-production point of view and from a colorist's point of view, Cinema Raw Light is a fantastic codec to actually work with. There's just so much data inside of it, it's incredible. You can really push the signal wherever you want to go. But the key thing is, it's at the same time also a very low CPU load codec, which means that it can play back very easily, you can scrub through it very simply, even on a laptop, which is kind of incredible really. The, those two things are kind of the holy grail. Lots and lots of data, but lightweight enough to edit with a laptop. So we've really got a codec deck that opens up a lot of avenues to us. In terms of the amount of data inside it, we've got quite a few key sort of indicators, if you like, that indicate that this is a codec that we can push quite far if we need to, which opens up all kinds of creative avenues if we want to really push a heavy look into the footage. So for example, this is proper Bayer pattern information straight from the sensor. Even though it's Canon RAW light, it is still the RAW information from the sensor at full RGB, so 444, no chroma subsampling whatsoever, no spatial compression, no temporal compression. The footage that you get from drones and GoPros is much harder to edit and work with than Cinema Raw Light. It's 10 or 12 bit. And to give you some idea, we're talking about 1 billion if it's 10 bit or 68 billion if it's 12 bit colors available to us. So Canon Cinema Gamut is, well, bigger than the actual human eye can see in terms of color response. So we've got a huge number of colors that we can capture within a very large gamut 
which means that we can go anywhere. It's much larger than REC 2020, it's much larger than obviously REC 709, P3 and any other gamuts that we might be delivering to. So we're capturing a huge, huge amount of data. This really large gamut gives us any number of options for deliverables from SDR to theatrical to HDR, REC 2020 and beyond because who knows what might come in the future, what standards might come along. We're capturing such a large gamut here in so many colours, we're to a certain extent future-proofing ourselves depending on what deliverables might be an option in the future. So there's a huge amount of colour information inside these Cinema Raw Light files. But at the same time, they're a third to a fifth of the size of the uncompressed RAW that you might get from a codex recorder, for example. So we're still talking about a very lightweight codec that has a low CPU load. It doesn't take much power to play back this file. So we have this kind of odd mix where we have a huge amount of data, huge amount of color information, but actually a lightweight file that we can even work with on a laptop. Depending on the scene, we might choose to use a different gamma. There's obviously Canon Log 2 to unlock the maximum dynamic range of the file, but there's Canon Log 3, which brings up the black point and retains the same amount of highlight information. There's the more gentle C Log, which would be more appropriate to a lower dynamic range scene. And of course, there's also YDR, there's standard Rec. 709. We have all the options available to us. We have additional options once we get into post with this Cinema Raw Light file. So you can get a look at the type of post-production workflow that Cinema Raw Light unlocks for you. So let's start with this shot here. The first thing I want to demonstrate is just how quickly and easily you can scrub through this. A very, very easy to play back and post-production friendly codec, which is great. There's actually a grade on this, on this shot. If I disable the grade, this is the raw file um, as it was captured from the C200. This is the graded image that we have on the end. We've actually got some OFX here. There's a slight bit of skin softening with a beauty effect on the end here. We've got uh, four other nodes that are just working together with this um, grade. So, you know, not a complicated, but then also not a straightforward grade. And that's all happening at the same time and we're still getting this real-time playback. Now another thing that we can do is we can go into our camera raw settings. So inside DaVinci Resolve we have a separate area to make what are known as first light or one light adjustments, which are adjustments to the raw level of the file. If I come in and set the decode quality to using full res Canon and then set it to clip, that will open up all of the various parameters that can be adjusted. And very importantly here we've got color space and gamma. So we can alter the color space depending on our delivery, if we're going out to HDR, if we're going out to SDR, to broadcast TV, to theatrical P3, we can change our gamut and we can change our gamma as well depending again on what we're trying to do, what kind of information we've got within the scene. This particular shot here has got a huge amount of color detail inside the shadows in, uh, in these areas down in the bottom right hand corner and then it's got these bright uh, clipped highlights around the sun here. This is a very high dynamic range scene and so Canon Log 2 is absolutely the right curve to use here but let's say we were happy to sacrifice some of that shadow detail but we wanted to maintain the highlight detail. Canon Log 3 would be the ideal curve to use in that particular instance and the fact we have that choice, we can make those gamma adjustments after the, the, the image has been captured is one of the huge benefits of RAW and one of the huge huge benefits of Cinema Raw Light. So there you go, hopefully you can see the post-production options that this codec unlocks for us are vast. And if you have a Cinema EOS camera that is capable of recording Cinema Raw Light, but you haven't so far, hopefully this has slightly demystified it for you, shown you that it's a relatively simple codec to work with, and also hopefully has got you excited about the options that it unlocks for you in your post-production workflows.